Hey guys, uh, oops, we are doing chapter three, section two today. I think this will be a pretty quick one, which will be nice. Uh, we're going to build on what we did in the first section. So here we go. All right, so uh, the difference between this and the first section is now we are solving what's called two-step equations, where in the first section we did one-step equations. So one more step in these, and we're going we're gonna to slowly build throughout the chapter. The, uh, the goal, I'm starting here at the beginning, the goal when solving an equation is to find a value for, do you guys, I think I heard a couple people say it, for the variable that will make the blank on the left side equal the blank on the right side. You have any idea what goes in there? All right, you have an equation and you have something over here and something over here and you want them to be equal. I heard it. The expression on the left side equal to the expression on the right side. So, you know, if you have something like 2x plus 3 and that equals 11, you want to find a value for x that makes the 2x plus 3 equal the 11. It's that simple. And yesterday we went over these steps. These are the steps you use. I claim that any linear equation can be solved using these three steps. And right now, we're not even using this one, and we're not using this one. We are just doing step three, which is to get the variable by itself. We are just practicing this skill right here. And yesterday, you did one-step equations. Today, we are going to do two-step. It says perform some operations, right? Well, these are the operations you perform. You are adding, you're subtracting, multiplying, dividing on both sides. Um, but now you're going to have to do it twice instead of once, right? Like up in this example, I now have two numbers to get rid of so that the X can be by itself instead of one number. And this is really easy. Uh, when there is more than one number to get rid of, when there's more than one number to eliminate, here's what you should do. You should get rid of the constant. We learned that word a couple days ago. The constant term first, then get rid of the coefficient. Last. And just so you remember, if you have something like 2x plus 3, right, this, why does that? This is your constant. The constant is the number that does not have a variable attached to it. And this thing is your coefficient. So, uh, the order is somewhat important. You should get rid of the constant term first and the coefficient second. And you, you always get rid of the constant term by adding or subtracting, whereas you always get rid of the coefficient by multiplying or dividing. So you're always going to add or subtract first and then multiply or divide second. And you might say, well, you know, I thought we did PEMDAS. And, and you'd be kind of right, but now instead of PEMDAS, we are getting rid of numbers. We are undoing the operations. And when you undo them, you do PEMDAS backwards. Do you know what PEMDAS backwards is? PEMDAS backwards is SADMEP. So when we're solving an equation, we actually do it backwards. We do the adding and subtracting first. Then we do the multiplying and dividing. 
All right, let's practice. We are going to practice a few problems and be done. It's that quick today. Here we go. So, um, interesting. All right, so the question here is, do you know what to do to isolate the variable? All I want to know is, is do you know what to do? And we did this on the homework yesterday, so this is nothing new, except now we have two steps to do instead of one. So here we go. Over here in this first one, I would first want to get rid of the constant term. Then I would want to get rid of the coefficient, right? So how would I get rid of the three? Remember, we are using the four sentences from the notes. We are using these four sentences again. And you are allowed to abbreviate on your homework. You are allowed to abbreviate one thing, remember, both sides. Everything else, just write it out. So in this one, the first step would be, of course, to subtract 3 from both sides. That would get rid of the 3. And then the second step would be to get rid of the 2, and you would get rid of the 2 by divide both sides by 2. And now you got rid of the 2. Remember how to get rid of a number? You do the opposite operation that the number is doing to the variable. Letter B, you, you could try to, well, here we go. Letter B, they tried to write it backwards and trick me, but still, this is the constant term. So this is what I'm going to get rid of first. And this is the coefficient. It's what I'm going to get rid of second. So first, I'm going to get rid of a positive 5, right? A lot of people make a mistake here. They see a minus sign, and they think we're going to add. But that minus sign goes with the 3. It does not go with the 5. The 5 is a positive 5. And to get rid of a positive 5, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Boom. And if I get rid of the 5, look, I am left with a negative 3. What is the coefficient of the x? It's negative 3, not just 3. And when you divide both sides by something, you divide by exactly what the coefficient is. So if the coefficient is negative 3, I divide by negative 3. So my second step would be divide both sides by negative 3. Next one. So the next one has that fraction in it. That's why I did this example. But that's not the first thing I'm going to get rid of, right? First, I'm going to get rid of the constant term. Then I'll get rid of the coefficient. So to get rid of the minus 11, when the constant term is negative or minus, I do the opposite. I add. I would be, whoops, I was going to do it actually. I'm going to add 11 to both sides. And that gets rid of the minus 11. Now, do you remember both ways to get rid of the two thirds? Right? The two thirds has been multiplied times the x. So I want to do the opposite of multiplying by two thirds. I want to divide both sides by two-thirds. But I am hoping that many of you remember that when you're dividing by a fraction, what are you actually doing? All right? Keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. Dividing by a fraction really means flipping it and multiplying. So a better answer here would be instead of dividing by two-thirds, multiply both sides by 3 over 2. Uh -huh. We'll do one of those on the back, I'm pretty sure. And I will demonstrate that. All right, letter D is the toughest one. Maybe. Let's see how you do. The first thing I want to do is get rid of the 8. Huh. That's the constant term. What, what, what is the coefficient? There doesn't seem to be a coefficient. Ooh, but there is, right? 
But first, I'm going to get rid of the 8. Is that 8 positive or negative? Well, all right, that, that 8 is positive. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. All right. And that gets rid of the 8. So now I just have that, that minus x equals 12. How do I get rid of the minus sign so that I can have the x by itself without the minus sign? Well, what you want to remember is when there's no number there, there actually is a number there. It is a 1. You're actually getting rid of the minus 1 or the negative 1. And that negative 1 is being multiplied by the x. So we are going to divide by it. I would divide both sides by negative 1. That gets rid of the negative 1 in front of the x. All right. I just want to do four examples on the back where we actually do this. And we will call it a day. In this first problem, which number am I going to get rid of first? You know I'm going to get rid of the 7. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides, right? Here is what I'm doing. I'm adding 7 to both sides. And then, of course, I draw my line, and I get the results. So the results in this case are 3x and negative 19 plus 7. That would be negative 12. All right, now I need to do something again. Uh, this time, oops, I need to get rid of the 3, so I'm going to divide by 3. Now again, here's what I'm doing. And then I draw a line, and I get rid of the 3, and these are my results. And my results would be x. Now, do you remember why that's an x? Because 3 divided by 3 is 1. So technically, you get 1x. But 1 times x is just x. 1 times anything, right? And on the other side, I have a negative 12 divided by 3. That would be negative 4. Bam, x equals negative 4 in that one. The next one. All right. Let's see, should I get rid of the 3 first or the 15 first? Well, of course, it's the 15. And I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. And I'm going to bring down my results. Over on the left side, it would be x over 3. What is it on the right side? What is negative 10 minus 15? Well, it's negative 25. And then... I need to get rid of the 3. Since my x has been divided by 3, I'm going to multiply by 3. Over here, I just get x. And negative 25 times 3 is negative 75. Right? This is not too hard to do. If you know what to do and you know how to do it, you're home free. Last two examples. We got the fraction and we got the minus x. Take care of those and we're done. So first I need to get rid of the 2. I would get rid of the 2 by subtracting 2, right? We always get rid of the constant term by adding or subtracting. That leaves me with the 3 fourths x and 17 minus 2 is 15. All right, we got a decision to make here. Which one are you going to do? Are you going to divide by 3 fourths? Or are you going to multiply by 4 thirds? All right? It's the same thing. The variable has been multiplied by a number, so I could divide by that number. But since that number is a fraction, keep change flip. Keep, change, flip. I actually multiply by its reciprocal. And guys, I prefer to multiply. So I'm going to multiply, but I am not offended if you would rather divide. But I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal 4 over 3. 
And I think this will help us uh, later, maybe when we get to fraction busters. So what do I get over here anyway? You know, technically I get 12 over 12 X, right? Four times three is 12, three times four is 12. But what does 12 over 12 equal? Well, it equals one, right? So really, again, this is just one X or X. And on the other side, I get 60 over three and 60 over three is 20. But bam, I multiplied by four thirds. All right, last one. Uh, I need to get the X by itself. First, I'm gonna get rid of the constant term. It's a positive seven. When the constant term is positive, I subtract it from both sides. And that makes it zero or cancels it out. And when I bring down my results, I have five and I have, all right, this is one of the biggest things people forget. They forget to bring down the minus sign. Don't let it happen to you. And now I need to get rid of that minus sign. And what you want to remember is that that minus is actually a negative one. The coefficient is negative one. So to get rid of the coefficient, you divide by it. Unless, of course, it's a fraction, then you can multiply by its reciprocal. Huh? All right, but I'm dividing by negative one. Over here, that just cancels out the negative one, and now I have x. Five divided by negative one is negative five. And that's true. 12 minus, oops, 12 equals seven minus negative five. That's true. Seven minus negative five is 12. So it works out. All right? Good luck on